After experimenting with the natural log and the exponential e to the x and seeing how they actually come from calculus definitions, it's good to take a look at some applications of those natural logs and exponentials, which generally center around exponential growth and decay. So the question we're going to answer is, what are some applications of the natural log of x and e to the x? And the first application is going to be exponential growth. where things are growing by some constant. And actually, with exponential growth, we have this guiding equation, y equals y sub 0 e to the kt. And this equation is going to kind of guide everything that we do today, but specifically in the context of exponential growth. First, labeling a couple things here. y is the final amount. y not or y sub 0 is the initial amount. k is some constant which varies based on the situation. And then t is time. And so for example, exponential growth might be seen in a population. Let's say the population of a bacteria grows 5% per year. Actually, no, let's say 5% per day. It's a bacteria. Bacteria grows pretty fast. If there are 500 bacteria, present in some culture, Back, bacteria, how long until there are 10,000 bacteria? Well, using our exponential growth equation, y is the final amount. We want to have a final amount of 10,000. y not is the initial amount, the 500. e to the k, that's our growth constant. Here we know it's 5%, 0.05. And t, t is the time we're looking for. That's what the question's asking us about. Well, to solve these type of equations, we first are going to isolate the exponential part. So we'll divide by 500. When we divide by 500, we get 20. So we have 20 is equal to e to the 0.05t. Taking the natural log of both sides to get at the exponent, we end up with the natural log of 20 is equal to the natural log of e is going to always simplify to the exponent. So that's going to be 0.05t. And so to finish solving, we just divide by 0.05t, and we get the natural log of 20 over 0.05. So our calculator can really quick us, quickly tell us what the natural log of 20 is divided by 0.05, making sure I close the parentheses on the natural log. We get about 59.91. So 59.91 hours of 5% growth will move this bacteria from 500 to 10,000. Another context where we see exponential growth would be with continuous interest. Interest is when you make an investment and it grows. And the interest could compound annually, which means you get the entire percentage at the end of the year. 
or monthly, which means that percentage is split up into 12 month increments, or weekly, divided into 52 increments, or daily, divided into um, 365 increments, or minutely, secondly, and if you keep going and take the limit as n goes to infinity, you get continuous interest that it's always growing at. And it's actually the exact same exponential growth equation. So we can use that equation to answer questions such as, what is the annual growth of 8% compounded continuously? In other words, what percent has it grown at at the end of the year, at the end of the annual period? It doesn't give us an investment amount. It actually works the same regardless of the investment amount. So let's say our initial investment amount is 1. That makes the math easy. So we want to know what the final amount is. So we invest 1 e to the growth rate of 0.08 times time, we're talking about one year, so we can see how much this is going to grow by. So we have 1 times e is just e to the 0.08 times 1. I really just have to type in the 0.08. And when I hit Enter, I end up with 1.0833. Let's round that to 3.3. 1.0833. And if I convert this to a percentage by moving that decimal point over, I can see after one year, I have 108.33% of my initial investment. Well, 100% is actually what I invested. The growth, it wants to know what the growth is. That's the 8.33% growth. So this investment gets 8% compounded continuously, which turns into an annual growth of a little more, 8.33%. Continuous interest. Another place we could see an application of exponential growth is in what's called doubling time. If I know how long it takes something to double, that's going to reveal to me what the constant is that I'm working with. The constant is the natural log of 2 divided by the time it takes to double. Now, if I was, had a tripling time, it would be the natural log of 3 divided by the tripling time. If it was multiplying by 10, it would be the natural log of 10 divided by the tripling time whatever we're multiplying by, but usually we're talking about a doubling time. So for example, let's say a population doubles every 15 years. How long will it take it to grow? to 10 times its size. Again, we're not told the initial size or the final size, but it turns out it works out the same regardless of what those are. We just need to make sure that our final size is 10 times the original. So I always choose 1 for the original, because that makes the math easier. 10 times that means we want a final size of 10. e to the k power, which is the natural log of 2 divided by the doubling time of 15 years, times t, the time it's going to take to get there. Since 1 times e is just e, we don't have to divide by anything in front of it. We can jump to taking the natural log of both sides. And when we take the natural log of e, we'll just end up with its exponent, the natural log of 2 divided by 15 times the time, which means to solve for t, we'll multiply by 15 on both sides. 
and divide by the natural log of 2 on both sides. And that'll give us the time. Be very careful as you type this in the calculator as you do 15 natural log of 10. Make sure you close the parentheses on the natural log before you divide by the natural log of 2, closing the parentheses. And that's going to give me 49.83. So how long is it going to take? 49.83 years to grow to 10 times its initial size. So that's exponential growth. Exponential growth is y equals y0 times e to the kt. The opposite of exponential growth is going to be exponential decay. Which is really similar. We're just shrinking instead of growing exponentially. The only difference in this formula is we're going to have a negative constant. y equals y0 times e to the negative kt. If it's negative, that means we're decaying or shrinking. And very similar to talking about doubling time, we have what's called the half-life. And that's the amount of time it takes a population or a group of stuff to shrink down to half of its original size. And very similar, the constant for a half-life is the natural log of 2 divided by the half time. I'll just call it the time. Because the exponent is negative, that's what gives us the 1 half equivalent instead of a doubling time. So because that exponent is negative, it's going to shrink to half 1 over 2 instead of doubling to just the 2. For example, this works great with dating really old things. Half-life of carbon, it's carbon-14 technically, is 5,730 years. In other words, every 5,730 years, half of carbon decays away. One of the Dead Sea Scrolls was tested in the year 2000 and found to have 81% of its carbon, 14, remaining. What year is it from? Approximately, because with all dating of old relics, there's always a little bit of fudge in it. We're talking about half-lifes, so we want to have 81% remaining. That's a good final number. If we start with 1 initially, 81% of 1 is 0.81. e to the constant, remember it's a negative constant because we're talking about decay and shrinking. With half-lifes, the constant is the natural log of 2 divided by the time 5,730 years times t, the amount of time or the age of this relic. Whoops. We don't really need the 1 out front. We do need the e, though. Taking the natural log of both sides, we get the natural log of 0.81 is equal to. The natural log of e gives us the exponent, negative natural log of 2 divided by 5,730 times time. So to solve for the time, we'll multiply by negative 5,730 times the natural log of 0.81, and then divide by the natural log of 2. So negative 5,730, natural log of 0.81. Make sure I close the parentheses, divided by the natural log of 2, closing the parentheses. And we end up with, let's round it to the nearest year, about 1,742 years old.
But be careful, the question was not asking how many years old it is. It wants us to estimate what year it's from. So this study was done in 2000. It was 1742 years old at that time. So when we subtract, we'll get approximately 258 AD as the year this scroll must have been originally written. And that's the mathematical process that they often go through to date old relics. In fact, more often, this method is used to prove fake relics. You'll see something that they claim was something that belonged to John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus Christ in Israel. But they carbon date it, and they find out that it came from the year 500. Well, that doesn't work in the timeline, so it's obviously a fake. So this is often used to identify fake relics or to verify a legitimate relic. Very interesting, though. Half-lifes and carbon dating. Another example of uh, exponential decay, it's got a little bit of a variation on a theme, but it is quite interesting to us, is Newton's law of cooling, where we say the final temperature of some item is its initial temperature minus the air temperature times e to the negative kt, how much time goes by, plus the air temperature. So just to label, tf is the final temp, t sub o is the initial temp. T sub A is the air temp. And then lowercase t is time. So let's not get lost in all of the t's. If I have a pot of coffee, that is poured at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. After five minutes, of room temperature, and for all sake, we'll say room temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, it cooled to 160 degrees. The question that we have is, when will it be cool enough to drink? And let's say cool enough to drink means 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The big piece of information we're missing here is what is the constant cool of this type of coffee? So we're going to run through the whole equation with this initial information given to us. It starts at 180 degrees. That's the initial temperature. After five minutes, that's the time. Room temperature, the temperature of the air is 72. It cooled to 160. That's the final temperature. Let's put this in our equation. The final temperature is 160 equals the initial temperature of 180 minus the air temp of 72, e to the negative k. That's what we're looking for. t, the time is 5, plus the air temperature which is 72 degrees. We have to isolate that E. Just like solving equations, we'll subtract first. 160 divided by 72 is 88 equals 180 minus 72 is 108 E to the negative 5K. Dividing both sides by 108 and reducing, we'll get 22 over 27 e to the negative 5k. To get at the exponent, we take the natural log of both sides, 22 over 27, equals the natural log of e just gives us the exponent of 5k. So k, our constant, is the natural log of 22 over 27 divided by negative 5. 
Now that we have an expression for the constant, we can answer the question, when will it be cool enough to drink? When will the final temperature be 150 degrees? So 150 degrees times 180 minus 72 times e to the negative. Notice we've got a negative negative, so it's actually going to be a positive. k is the natural log of 22 over 27 divided by 5 times the time plus the 72. We're going to solve this much the same way. We'll subtract the 72 to get 78 equals 108e to the natural log of 22 over 27 divided by 5t. Divide by 108. When we reduce, we get 13 out of 18. e to the natural log of 22 over 27 divided by 5 times t. Take the natural log of both sides, natural log of 13 over 18 is going to be equal to the exponent, which is the natural log of 22 over 27 divided by 5 times t. And if we multiply by 5 and divide by the natural log of 22 over 27, we end up with our final temperature. So pulling up our calculator, 5 natural log of 13 over 18, closing the parentheses, divided by the natural log of 22 over 27. To get our final amount of time, we have to wait before we drink of about 7.95. 7.95 minutes. This coffee will be ready to drink, almost eight minutes. So we looked at two equations today and a couple variations on a theme, exponential growth and exponential decay. Very similar equations. Decay has a negative on the constant. Growth does not. Take a look at practicing some of these applications of logs and exponents on your homework assignment, and we will meet in class to discuss these further. Good luck.